right now on Upfront. Battle for Wisconsin. We've got the game plan. I'm sure Democrats do as well. It's going to be a close race. 23 days until Election Day, the campaign's returning to Wisconsin. Attention now turning to election night in the key swing states. Does that keep you up at night, the thoughts of what could happen? But we are going to have poll watchers everywhere. This Sunday, the push for poll watchers. Safety concerns intensifying at the polls. Now the Justice Department preparing just three weeks out. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call with us one on one. Close race. I plan to win this race. I will win this race. The battle for U.S. Senate tightening. A toss up between Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin and Republican challenger Eric Hovde. What do you do in the next four weeks to change that? Senator Steve Daines, chair of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, with us on the growing Republican investment in Wisconsin. And political play. It's really cool to get people interactive, get, let them know what they're getting into when they go to the votes. The Bucks pushing fans to the polls inside the voter registration event at Pfizer Forum and sports teams banking on politics. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Three weeks from Tuesday and the parade of campaign stops intensifying again this week. Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Walls in Wisconsin tomorrow and attention quickly turning to election night, concerns over security, potential threats and a fair election. The Republican National Committee continuing to train thousands of poll watchers in key swing states, including Wisconsin. What would you, what would the campaign like to see that? What is that gonna look like on election night across Wisconsin? Yeah. Well, my wife, she wakes up talking about election integrity in the morning. She has bed talking about election integrity. I mean, there's no one more dedicated to that mission than her. And at the end of the day, you don't have democracy if you don't have election integrity. And it's a cognizant effort. Um, we are going to have poll watchers everywhere. My, uh, my, my, my wife is working on this again 24-7. And, and again, there's nothing more important than a free and fair election. And my fear is that the talk itself, that it might intimidate people, discourage people from getting to the polls. Uh, and I think I can assure the American people that we have systems in place, we have lawyers in place um, that will protect their right to vote and that everybody should participate, everybody should cast their, their ballot. Uh, I think at the end of the day, those ballots will be counted and the system will ultimately be fair. It, it, does that keep you up at night, the thoughts of what could happen in some of these swing states? Yeah, I suspect, I'm concerned that in some of these states we're going to have elections that are close and that we're going to have to do things well after election day to determine who exactly is the winner. And I think we're going to have to push back against attempts by Republicans to kind of, you know, rig the system. With that, let's bring in Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call. Mr. Attorney General, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. We're going to get to all of this in a minute. First, I, I want to start with WASA and the investigation into the mayor up there for removing the city's ballot drop box. We know DCI is now investigating. The DOJ has taken over that investigation. What's the latest on that, and should we anticipate charges? Well, as we've talked about, uh, the, as you said, the Division of Criminal Investigation is investigating. We're working with uh, the Marathon County District Attorney. Uh, that investigation is ongoing, uh, and because it's an ongoing investigation, there's there's not much more we can say at this point in time. But um, what I will say is that we take any allegations of improprieties relating to our elections very seriously, uh, and we're going to work to make sure that if if there are allegations, they're fully and thoroughly investigated. What do you think about a mayor taking a ballot drop box and moving it into his office? Well, because we're investigating, I don't want to comment on the specifics of this. But what I can say is that. In Wisconsin, we have safe and secure elections. Drop boxes have been a successful part of that, and we know that they're safe and secure. And, and just think about the fact that people can cast a ballot by mail. That's taking your ballot somewhere, putting it in a mailbox. A drop box is similar, but it's actually even more secure because it doesn't then go through the Postal Service, it just immediately goes to an election official. Now, I fully trust the Postal Service as well, but drop boxes are a safe and secure method of voting. I want to ask about the election now less than four weeks away. What scenarios uh, leading up to election day, even on election night, uh, are you as the Department of Justice preparing for? So before major elections, we did this four years ago as well, we work to do a number of things. One is we communicate with district attorneys and law enforcement around the state to make sure that they've got updated information about the laws that are in place and what they should be looking out for. We also serve as a resource for those offices if, if they want to reach out to us. We also want to make clear that voter intimidation is a crime. Everybody in Wisconsin who's eligible to vote needs to be able to do so without unlawful interference. And we need to make sure that the process goes smoothly. So if people make criminal threats against our election officials, just like anybody who intimidates a voter, they, they need to be uh, expecting to be held accountable 
we're committed to working with any partners we need to to make sure that our laws are enforced and that the right to vote is protected. Especially coming out of 2020, what's your biggest concern headed into election night? Well, I certainly think it's possible that we will see challenges to the results again. There have been uh, baseless suggestions again about the integrity of, the, of our elections. So I think two things are important. One is we need to make clear, and when I say we, I mean bipartisan groups of people need to make clear that we have safe and secure elections in Wisconsin. And then secondly, we're certainly prepared if we need to, to defend the results of the election. This is not how new so? ground in Wisconsin. Yeah, well, since I've taken office as attorney general, we've had a lot of challenges to our voting system. There was an effort to remove tens of thousands of voters from the rolls. We defended against that effort and we won. There were efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Several lawsuits were filed. We won every one of those cases and the results were upheld. There was the Gableman investigation, which we stood up to, and ultimately that investigation was shut down. Um, we worked to, to fight for fair maps as well. I was proud to be one of the lawyers representing the governor in that fight. So we have had litigation after litigation regarding our elections, and in some cases, the results of the elections, we have consistently won and we are prepared to defend those results again. You just mentioned some of the cases where you've had to defend Wisconsin's elections in the past. As we look ahead to these November elections, what scenarios are you preparing for when it comes to the certification of the results from November 5th? Well, I think there are a lot of things that could happen between Election Day and when the results are, are certified. In a few other states, there have been concerns about whether election officials themselves will certify the results. Um, in Wisconsin, the obligation that election officials have to do that is clear. Uh, I'm confident that Wisconsin's election officials are going to follow the law. Um, but of course, if there is a violation of the law, um, we're prepared to take legal action. And, and then there could be uh, challenges in court to the results. Uh, there, there could be a number of grounds that people raise. We saw some grounds raised last time. But I, I'll say this. First, challenges to the rules that are in place in our elections are supposed to be brought months before elections happen. There's a doctrine the U.S. Supreme Court has put out that says you can't be changing election laws shortly before an election. You certainly shouldn't be changing them after an election, after a voter has relied on them. Because of that, I'm quite confident that the rules that are in place are going to ultimately be upheld by the courts. Uh, but we still need to make sure that we are prepared to defend uh, if cases are filed, and, and we will. And then I think it's possible we will see efforts in Congress again to, to challenge the results. And I think it's important that our congressional representatives make clear that they're going to respect the certification process here in Wisconsin and other states so that the, the winner of the election as determined by the process we have in place is certified as the winner of the presidential election. You've charged three former allies of former President Donald Trump, including Jim Troopas, Kenneth Chesbrough, with felonies related to 2020 and the fake electors scheme. You said in June that the investigation was still open and, and more charges may be possible. Are we going to see more charges in this case? The investigation remains ongoing. As you said, there are three people who've been charged and the, the criminal process is moving forward. There's a, a court date set for, for later this year uh, and there will be other court dates as, as the case moves forward. Um, but we're committed to developing the facts as, as fully as possible, gathering the evidence, and making assessments based on the facts and the law. Uh, so that's how we're going to continue proceeding. It's how we have proceeded to, to this point. And again, our, our commitment to ensuring that our elections are safe, secure, but also free and fair uh, is, is absolute. And we're going to continue working to do that. Uh, whatever circumstances arise, and, and we're going to respond based on the facts. Have you ruled out charging former President Donald Trump? Well, like I said, the, the investigation is ongoing. We don't approach investigations thinking about, is this particular individual potentially going to be charged or not, in the abstract. We do that based on the facts as they are developed. And as we are gathering facts and learning more information, that's what shapes the direction we take with an investigation and, and should also shape the direction a prosecutor takes in making a charging decision. People are going to see that as you not saying a definitive no on that. Well, in any case where we're investigating, we are committed to following the facts where they lead. We have a basic principle in our system of justice, which is that we have equal justice under the law. Nobody is above the law. And so we apply the law equally. Now, uh, we're not going to speculate on who may or may not have evidence that's, that's gathered against them. What I can tell you is that the decisions that we make with respect to our investigation and any charging decisions we're in a position to make will be based not on the identity of the individuals involved, but on the facts and the law. But fair to say this investigation is still open from your perspective. This remains an ongoing investigation.
We got through a lot. Attorney General Josh Call, Attorney General, like always, we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Up next, Wisconsin's U.S. Senate race, a toss-up this weekend between Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin and Republican Eric Hovde. Now growing national attention, Montana Senator Steve Daines leading the effort for Republicans to win the majority is standing by next.